Hi everyone, uh, something a little different today. Um, I haven't done a video for a long time, whether it be on the house or outside the house or bathrooms or caravans or motorbikes or whatever, but today we're going to do a bit of work on my um, my daily driver, so my, uh, my Ford Territory. Now I've got a couple of little suspension issues, nothing major, but you know the car's 18 years old and it's yeah it's time for a couple of things to be replaced so we've got these rear trailing arms here uh, that need to be put in I've never done a set of these before but they don't look hard there's three bo three bolts here obviously there's a saddle there so there's two bolts there now what's happened on my old ones is this bush has cutouts in here and the actual bushes collapse so this center shaft is now sitting on this outer ring it's not centralized in the middle of the uh in the bush and that's happened on both sides we're going to replace those we're going to do one side at a time um simply because i don't want the whole car suspended in the air and um i only have one of these scissor jacks that obviously comes with the car you can see for the height of the car it's got this extension on it so we'll do one side at a time um, I've got a trolley jack out also which should the suspension sag and make it difficult to bolt the arm in I can put the trolley jack underneath the um, the lower control arm to lift it up to put these in not ex exactly sure what they call these I, I did know what the name of them was a week ago but total brain fade at the moment but uh, if you own a territory or a a falcon of the same era so this is 2004 this was the first territory model to come out december 2004 so um you'll have this same setup and these are a um common occurrence um for failure on the rear end um but they're cheap enough to replace anyway so i think i think all up that the two of them cost me delivered i think 113 dollars so i can't really complain there it's that's not bad so anyway seeing that we're dealing with dangerous stuff and i'm not a qualified mechanic although i like to think i am sometimes <laughs> um just going to go through a bit of uh a bit of housekeeping or um, prep work because if you do this and you take what I have told you and I don't cover things and something happens you're going to go well this guy on YouTube said that's the way to do it I don't want to be held responsible for anything so um, you know if I kill myself doing my own car or injure myself that that's my business but if you take what I tell you as being you know that's the way you do it then you know this is sort of my disclaimer take it on at your own risk but anyway don't forget to wheel chock the front of the car okay so when you jack it up you want to have these wheel chocked so that was in tight guys um, until I jacked it obviously it's moved a little bit so make sure that when you have jacked it up you double check your chocks you don't want the car rolling forward um, I'm doing one side at a time that way it leaves me with a wheel on the ground at the back for stability and so the car can't roll back handbrake is still on the, the car is still in park so yeah uh, we've also got underneath here we've got uh, a stand okay try and get underneath the chassis rail try and keep it as far away from this as you can because as you can, as you can see the jacking point is right here where I've got to take the two bolts out but with a the stand there now I can take this jack out so I've already loosened it off um, prior to me starting to film so we can take this jack out oh one thing I'm going to tell you too is when you when you if you've never jacked up a territory before 
the slot in the top of this jack is fairly generous. Now that this plastic cover actually overlays the lip of the seal. So what you want to do is you want to move the jack as far forward this way as you can so you don't actually break you don't break your plastic. Um, you you want to have a little bit of um, you want to have a little bit of clearance. I don't know if if I can show you this because it there's there's not a lot in it, but there's enough that you can clear your plastic, and you shouldn't you shouldn't damage your plastic. So yeah, you want to get it up behind the steel. You heard that click, so that just caught on the plastic then, but that's gone up behind the steel, and then just bring your jack so the the play we got in it you want to bring you want to bring that as far forward as you can making sure that you're keeping this nice and flat on the ground and then jack it up so you don't break your plastic so that's good we won't let the jack all the way down because it is a bugger to wind up you sort of have to do half turns with this setup but it's good and that doubles as um, your lug nut spanner as well so rather than having a separate wheel brace Ford got smart in the later years and made this a 21 millimeter uh, head and also made the lug nuts 21 mil so all good all right um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wheel off before the wheel lifted off the ground I did um, loosen the nuts off I'll get the wheel off and then we'll move to the next stage Okay, as you can see, we've got the wheel off now. I've put a jack just under the um, the pivot point here and taken just a little bit of the um, the downward pressure off it because obviously you want to have enough you want to have enough um, to be able to move this up and down a little bit. So if you if you bring if you bring this up, you, you've got a little bit of play. Um, these three bolts. They have a 15 millimeter head on it, and the two bolts at the front have an 18 millimeter head on it. Now you can use a standard size socket on these uh, to get these off, but for the front ones, they have a very long thread on them, so you're going to need to use a deep socket to undo those. Now I don't know what in what order I need to dismantle these, um, but I think I'm going to start with the front bolts uh, because if anything's going to pull um, it's going to pull from the front first so you know it'll, it'll pull everything back I want to leave them in place uh, for now don't ask me what my my thinking is on that but I just think that the front ones would be the better ones to have a go at first also with the spare wheel um, I'm quite lucky. I've got um, this. This vehicle's on LPG, running on LPG, so I have an LPG tank cover there. Uh, so I just put the spare wheel under the tank cover, just in case. Just in case, but, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, just for a bit of security. Uh, on a normal territory, you would have your spare wheel there if you're not running LPG. So just stick your wheel under there for a bit of added, you know, safety. Um, with your jack, always take your handle out so you don't trip over it, and always try and keep your tools at a safe distance away from your working area, so you're not tripping over things. You've got them all laid out nice, you can see where everything is. Okay, let's get started on undoing those front bolts. Okay guys, as you can see, we've got number one bolt here, number two bolts here. You can see the length of them. Okay, that's why you need the deep socket. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, one thing you're probably going to find is if your rear arms, uh, the bolts for the for the rear arms have never been um, have never been uh, taken off before, they're probably going to be very tight. Or if anti seize hasn't been used after, um, you know, they've been replaced before. Um, and you're only using an impact wrench. I know there's some really good impact wrenches on the market that will basically move anything at any torque setting. 
um, but if you're just running like a cheapy home brand like me, this isn't going to cut it to break the nut. You're going to need a breaker bar, but once you use the breaker bar, you pop your 18 mil on there and it just comes off. So, yeah. And with this one also, you're not going to be able to use a, um, a torque gun or rattle gun. It's probably best just to go with a standard ratchet here because you've got a couple of stays here um, that get in the way of extensions and things like that. So it's just as easy to get in there with a uh, standard ratchet so let's get some light on the subject here so hopefully you guys can you can see that that's a standard ratchet with a standard size socket and there's actually plenty of room so you don't need to go with a uh, with a with a extension now we've got a cable here which looks like it is um, it looks like it is uh, pushed in to this arm so we will need to get some pliers as well it doesn't matter if I guess it doesn't matter if you do it before you take the bolts out as long as you leave one bolt in so all the weight doesn't come down on the cable but you know what I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna take that cable out so you've just got some little little nubs that come through on this side of the arm you just want to squeeze them push them through get the cable clear before you drop the uh, three bolts at the back once you've got once you've got your uh, your ratchet located on your your nuts just try and just try and work with your arm outside of the the component so that's that one's loose we'll get the next one on I just want to try and that's it. Just break the tension on the bolts. Just be cautious, guys. That's that's all. You, just, you know, you don't want to turn a good day into a bad day. It's never a good day when you've got to spend money on your car. But <laughs> um, yeah. And now these these little lugs, I did uh, squeeze them out. Get some light here for you again. As you know, these GoPros aren't fantastic. Well, the older GoPros aren't fantastic in the dark. So I just squeezed the lug, pushed them through. They look like they're cable tied, and they are cable tied. But the cable tie is actually part of the um, the lug. So if you go cutting the cable tie, you're not going to be able to fasten the cable back in. So make sure you push the plug out. Just get your pliers on the on the very tip of it, and just push, and it should just pop straight out. Uh, one thing you want to take note of too guys is that this arm sits back behind this mount now the way the it should be a no-brainer but the way this is designed with the step inside here sorry for that bad camera work it sort of makes you think that the chassis or the the um, the mount would sit inside there but it doesn't. It sits. It actually sits on the outside. So make sure you're not encasing that mount inside the arm. Okay. It's it's an easy mistake. If you go to bolt the back up first, you could easily bolt it. Could easily bolt it up over over the front here. I'm, I'm guessing. I think the um. It, I'm, I'm guessing that the uh, the shape of this would probably clear. So if you ran into problems, you would know that, yeah, you've put it on the wrong side. Okay, guys, the arm is out. One thing I'm going to tell you to be really careful about is it doesn't matter in which sequence you take these bolts out. I, I started from the bottom, I did the middle, and then I did the top. As I did the top, the arm started to come away, but it wasn't under pressure. It was just, obviously, that it's that's just probably because of the way the car's jacked up or whatever but it was it was nice and free floating but be very careful um, this is one thing I've just learned be very careful because as soon as you take that last bolt out this whole thing is just gonna drop and if your arms in the way it's gonna hit you in the wrist and you're gonna have a big you're gonna have a big lump where that hits you so 
Um, having just seen what happened, I am going to opt, when I do the other side, to remove the back bolts first, and then remove these ones second. So, yeah, just, um, like nothing, nothing happened, didn't hit me. Um, I was cautious because I'd had a look, when I was undoing these, I had a look back at these to see whether they dropped on the shafts, and I saw that they were right down on the tip, where, where, where this tapered tip starts. And I thought, okay, yeah, if I take that bolt out, that's just gonna drop straight onto the ground, and it did. So yeah, be very careful. I'd suggest starting with the front, sorry, starting with the back first, and then doing, doing the front. Um, because in that way, when you take you can use your, your rattle gun or your, your impact gun and you can hold the arm with your other hand so you, you, you can actually support it now we're going to take a look at these bushes as you can see there's not a lot holding that together anymore there's, it's split right around here sorry about that little thumb guard but as most of you know I did the bizzo on the, the thumb about 20 months ago and it's I've had two operations and it's still not right so I'm trying to protect it today you can see there um, it's split right through now there's the original um, there's the original labeling it doesn't really give us any dates it just says it's for um, Ford Falcon which is basically the same setup as a territory um, you can actually still see on the rubber the um, stamping which is IRM-002 so these you know for bushes to get out after seven years it's a little disappointing but um, yeah that's the way it goes now you can actually buy these bushes individually you don't have to buy the whole arm but one thing you've got to make sure of is that you've got a press and the other thing too is you don't know how straight your arms are your arms have got a slight bend in them and you put new bushes in it it could put tension on your bushes and rip them apart so yeah not good i think to buy a pair of these is worth about 80 dollars but to buy the whole arm assembly both sides was what did i say about 113 dollars delivered and these ones uh these ones come with a a two-year warranty i live in melbourne um, I'm in the northern suburbs. These actually came from a company in Dandenong. So, yeah, fairly local, I guess. You know, 40-odd 40, 40 minute drive over there should something go wrong. But at least they're local, covered by a two-year warranty. They also do other suspension components as well. Um, not getting paid to do this, but um, this, is, this is the company here. Um, I've dealt with them before. I've bought some other suspension components from them um, for this territory and for a couple of my Falcons, and they've been really good. I've got a, some caster rods that I've got to replace on the front of this as well, which I've already bought, and they were around about the same price for the for the pair, but they come with a five-year warranty, so. No one's going to give you a five-year warranty on something if they're shit. So, um, you know, <laughs> so you buy a brand new car, some manufacturers won't give you even 12 months on a suspension component on a, on a rubber because it's a wear and tear item. So um, to get two years on these, oh, I'm pretty happy. So check those guys out. They're in Dandenong, Victoria. Um, they post all over Australia, I believe, and have branches throughout the country so um yeah check them out check them out hey one thing you'll notice guys is when you put your new arm in you can do the front bolts up you can fully do them up but you're gonna find what i did is before i, t I tighten them i put the bottom bolt in i got uh, i got it started and then i tightened the two front ones and what that has done now is it sort of pulled the arm forward and the holes don't quite line up. So what I'm do what I've done is I've I'll grab just a, a an old scissor jack that I have in the garage, and I'm slowly just cranking it up to bring 
the holes into alignment. Now, I think that's right. I think that's good there. So we'll try this top one. See how we go. It's just going to be sort of a little bit of hit and miss. Um, just to get it to get it lined up. Okay, we're very close because I can sort of feel it starting. But I'll need to put the camera down, guys, just to fiddle around with this. And um, as soon as I get that bolt in, I'll uh, keep filming. Okay, no sooner did I say that, I, I gave that just the quarter of a turn, and now I'm actually winding that bolt in by hand. You can see the thread coming through now. Okay, so not hard. Now, based on what I've done so far, minus having to stop and start for the video, um, I reckon this has taken me, once I got all my stuff out of the garage, the actual work time on it is 20 minutes. So this is something very simple that you can do yourself from home. Um, like I said, you always got to be careful. Um, you know, if we're not qualified mechanics, we, we can um, we can make a mess of things and we can uh, end up injured and and um, yeah, you can see that one coming through. Once you get it lined up, it's perfect. Okay, so I'm only doing this with fingers. Now the bottom one. Is a little tighter because that's the one I started on, um, but I am still turning it. It'll take me a, bit, a little bit longer, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to finish tightening these up, and we'll get back to it. Okay, guys. One thing I've found I haven't tightened anything up yet. Um, I was going to put that, that cable back in those two little uh, lugs, and I wasn't having much luck. It's as if the holes were too small. So what I did is I, I do have verniers but I'm just going to show you guys a quick way to um, work this out if you don't have verniers so I just got my drill kit out I had my drill kit here anyway so I just you know went through a th few drill bits to find out what size the hole actually was that was in these ones because the, the lugs fitted perfect in there and this is a 7.5 millimeter drill bit <laughs> These clearly are not 7.5 millimeter holes. So it's a little unfortunate, but um, I've got to drill them out to get the plugs back in. But it's no biggie. So let's do it together. Okay, I said the drill bit was 7.5, but I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to go with 7 first. Um, so. as simple as that guys so see if we can get our lug back in if it goes in at seven it'll be seven there you go seven mil see good thing i, I double checked uh better to go smaller than go too big you know what better you could probably even go a 6.5 on that um <laughs> this front one i got the tip just in on this but yeah so but that's that's a nice fit. It's at seven. Okay. So sorry if I'm blocking blocking the camera there, guys. I don't mean to. Um, it's pretty awkward. You know me and camera work. I'm not um I'm no no I'm not going to win a an Emmy <laughs> for anything. But um, there you go, the two lugs are back in. Now, I've, I've tightened these bolts with a ratchet. I'm actually going to use a shorter breaker bar on this. Um, I do have a torque bar, and there obviously would be torque settings for this rear end. And it's probably in your best interests to actually find out what the torque settings are so that you can do it properly and safely uh, but not everybody will have a torque wrench now I don't like putting a lot of pressure on a ratchet now I worked for a tool company one of the biggest tool companies in the world I worked for them for 10 years um, in multiple departments and I know a bit about tools and um, yeah, ratchets are not, ratchets are good for doing things up, firmly, 
but not for tensioning things. You can easily strip the gears out inside the ratchet. Um, yeah, you can just make a real mess of it. So um, once you've got it, once you've got it tensioned up with your, um, your ratchet, then get a breaker bar and you can apply as much pressure on that as you want. You're not gonna over tighten it. Um, you're not gonna over tighten it beyond its its factory specs. Not with a not with a not with a hand breaker bar. You won't. So, um, but you'll definitely get it tighter than you will with a ratchet. Again, guys. Um, if you do the front one up with your um, impact impact driver, um, just get your breaker bar out and uh, just have a bit of a, a pull on that with your breaker bar because it'll it'll definitely do it up tighter than what your um, your impact gun will. So yeah. Okay, um, front ones have been tensioned, so I can just let this jack down now, which will basically fall out because. All the bolts are in. Strange thing is, um, it's not weird. Well, it sort of is weird, but this bolt doesn't look like it comes through the casting as far as these, which is true, it doesn't, but that's because there's a, it, it's right on the curve here. So I've double checked that, I've tensioned it, same as these, so I just, you know, as you would with a, with a, a proper torque wrench, you know, don't try and do it all don't try and do the one bolt all in one hit get it firm go down to the next one get it firm next one get it firm come back do it again do it again do it again do it three times work your way around beautiful after a week of driving um it's worth revisiting if you've never done any mechanical work before you know, I've done lots of mechanical work over the years, built hot rods and all done customs and done cars for friends, built 65 Mustang for my best mate. So, you know, I'm pretty confident with my work, but still, you know, I'll come back in a week's time and I'll just, I'll check it just to make sure because things will move now. We've got brand new bushes in there that actually sit central, uh, bushings that sit central. So, you know, things will move and, um, and we want just want to make sure that everything's right. But that's that's all there is to that, guys. Um, I'm not going to show you me putting the wheel back on. That's a waste of time. But probably 20 minutes, you save yourself a lot of money taking it to a mechanic. But if you like, if you're not confident, don't attempt it. Um, if you think it's something you can do, do it. Everything pretty much stays in line. You don't have any real big struggles here to try and you know that, that things will because everything's like obviously it's suspension so it's springy nothing really moves back or moves up or moves down provided you just put a little bit of support underneath it um try and have a spare jack on hand you know i probably didn't even need this one under there but i just i wanted to have that little bit i just wanted to have that little bit in case i needed it so yeah Scrounge up a couple of jacks. The other thing you could do is if you don't have another jack, you could use the one jack that you've got and um, put a couple of bricks under it. Or if you've got another stand, a very low stand, you could put a stand under it or a block of wood under it just to, just to hold the suspension up just very slightly. You may not need it. Mechanics may tell you you don't need it. But I don't know. Um, I've just done it to give myself a little bit should I need it. And it's worked out fine. So to pull the whole lot out, re-drill the holes, bolt everything back up, and yeah, uh, 20 minutes, 20 minutes aside. So it's five bolts. Nothing's really under tension. Like I said at the end there, you may just need to put something under the, under the front here just to sort of line your your bolt holes up. But that's all it is. You're just aligning. You're not you're not really um, you're not really having to put any pressure on any anything, and, and that's it. You're ready to go. We'll go through reversing the procedure. So we're just doing this on the on the fly, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it in reverse. So the first thing we want to do is obviously that jack's been pulled out, which we don't need. We put this jack back under. 
making sure we got that clearance with the plastic there we don't want to bust the edge off, off the plastic so um, I can grab my 18 millimeter socket oh, sorry 21 millimeter socket I should say is that the right one yeah that's the right one there. Oh, me and my GoPro skills, eh? Hey? So we're just gonna. Now I'm keeping an eye on that jack stand too, um, because we're gonna need to take that out shortly. So I've just, just gone fractionally above it. So this is at a good height now where I can take this trolley jack out. So hopefully this, I'm pretty sure that the um, the framing on this camera is going to uh, pick up the trolley jack. So I'm going to take the trolley jack out. There we go. whole reason for that is if we don't take the trolley jack out the wheel won't go far enough back and um, we'll be stuck so <laughs> let's grab the wheel which is nice and hot <laughs> We've got, our, we've got our lug nuts there, we're going to change out sockets, we're going to go with our nice deep socket on this, I think, no, no, actually we could use the standard one, we could use the standard one on that, I'm uh, just trying to think how I had it set up before, uh, I think I had a small extension on there, so we go with a small extension and the socket, and then that's it, I'm going to put this back together. Never do them up too tight. You've got to get all your nuts on first. Make sure your rims, your rims seated properly. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, you're going to be wobbling and crabbing down the road. So you got to be, you just got to go. You just got to go slow too. Make sure, make sure that um, you don't strip your threads. Make sure your your rim is seated properly. Have a look down in between the spokes of your rim. Make sure it's sitting on the uh, on the rotor. Now again, I don't use this to tension my wheel nuts, I just do them to uh, nip them up. So I worked in the star pattern, now I'm just going to go around the outside and uh, now we'll grab this nice big boy. Oh, I've got to get out. <laughs> give it a little bit more of attention here and then when we drop it on the ground we'll do it again okay that's that's enough to drop her on the ground there's no play in it so that's that's all good we need to take our jack stand out so I may need to go just a fraction higher with this with this uh, with this jack I just need a little bit there's just not enough there for me to flick the flick the uh, the handle so I can flick the handle now take that, take that out 
Now we can let this bad boy down. Okay, there we go. We don't want to go all the way down because we've got to um, we've got to jack it up again. So now she's down on the ground. We just check our tensions again. Make sure that she's uh, up nice and tight. So a little bit more out of that thing. A little bit more out of that. Sort of hear it when it creaks. There you go. There we go. Okay, that's one side done on a Ford Territory. So happy days, happy days. So guys, once you've got all your gear out and got all your gear set up, ready to go, it's probably going to take you about 20 minutes. Um, just keep in mind that you might have to drill those arms out to um, to seven mil, uh, as as these ones were. These these are a bit sloppy. I think whoever's tried to drill, it, I think these have been drilled out. To be honest, because the reason I say that is there is a burr there. There's a burr there on that side, and they're not exactly freaking round. <laughs> Now this was the 7.5 I picked up, but as you can see it won't go into that one, but it will go into that one. So someone sort of wiggled the drill back and forward trying to get it opened up a bit. So I don't know why the, um, I don't know why the um, supposed holes, for factory holes, aren't the right size for those lugs. Maybe the lugs are put in under pressure in the in on the assembly line. I don't know, but you'll need to take them out to seven millimeters. You'll have to re-drill these to seven millimeters. Um, so you can do them either when they're loose off the car like this, or you can do them on the car because there is enough room to get in there with your drill to do them. But you will have to do them. Okay guys, we've done the other side now. You can see how badly split that is. A big mess. Uh, the replacement, I drilled the two holes out here on the concrete, which was really easy. And I think it took me, no word of a lie, I think it took me about 10 minutes to do the entire side. That was dismantled and reassembled and wheel back on. So once you get the first side done, and you sort of know what you're doing, the second side's really easy, really easy. And I did it in reverse to what I did before when I, I dismantled it. So I took the three bolts out of the back first, and then I moved to the front, and I took the two bolts out um, using the impact driver, and I was able to use my spare hand to hold the arm so it wouldn't drop down onto the concrete perfect so i'm going to leave that here for now uh we've got some um castor rod bushes to do on the front it won't be in this video i'll make that a separate video and uh that should be a suspension all taken care of for another 10 years hopefully cheers <laughs>